Hey everyone, Cody here and welcome back to the channel. So today I've got another one of those kind of dabbed paintings for you. Um, before I say anything, I had some paint on the watercolor paper right off the bat and I think it's just because it was on my glove. And so I moved my glove and I had wet paint on it so it got on there. But anyway, let's talk about today's painting. So the colors I'll be using today are pink, I think it's a taffy pink, gold, um, purple odyssey, which is like a dark purple, um, something orchid, vibrant orchid or something like that. It's like a, it's a lighter purple. It's pretty similar in shade, but it's a little bit lighter. Um, and then of course white. And so what I'll be doing today is if you haven't seen any of these, basically I'll just be pouring the paint on the canvas and then kind of dabbing it around with a piece of corrugated plastic. And so to make these paintings, Basically, I will start by putting quite a bit of paint onto the, the watercolor paper here. And I'll put it all around the canvas so that, you know, it kind of makes sure that it breaks up the colors. But it also covers a large portion of the paper because sometimes there is little gaps in there. So try to cover it as much as possible. Um, I probably do use too much paint, but I mean, I don't. I don't know what what are you gonna do right so um but yeah so the gold i really didn't want a lot of like big pockets of gold i kind of wanted just the gold to to be like little hints of gold in the other colors so you'll notice that i'm not really doing a whole lot of like big pockets of gold here so i'm really just kind of putting it uh, in the other colors and then kind of filling in the gaps on the paper with the color the other colors so that I can kind of make sure that I cover the whole thing um, so there's a little bit of you know some some of these gaps just trying to fill them in and then we move on to the dabbling dabbing whatever you want to call it so the biggest thing to know about these types of paintings if you ever want to make one is that uh, you have to start with the lightest colors. So especially if you have white in the painting, because if you start with the, all the other colors and then move into white, it's going to cloud that white and kind of just overtake it anyway. Um, so you kind of have to start with areas that are white um, when you don't have too much paint on it, because that way you can kind of actually see the white in the painting. Um, because if you start with like the darkest colors and then kind of go to the white, it swallows it up. Now, depending on the look you're going for, that might be okay. Um, but because I wanted the white to show up in the painting, you know, I had to kind of add some more here, but also just make sure that I started with that so that it would show up at least, to, at least to give it some highlights, you know, before it kind of got swallowed up in the painting itself. So again, I usually, for these types of paintings, I've been starting with the lightest colors and then kind of working into the darker colors so that, you know, it's kind of a progression. Now, what I probably should have done was gone from white to pink, since pink is lighter than the purple. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's not like I'm, I haven't been doing this technique very long. I just kind of started doing it a few days ago. So, it's, you know, I'm still kind of learning it myself, but I wanted to show you guys the process so that you could kind of see um, how I've been making these really dynamic paintings. And I, I really like these. Of course, I love doing the scrape paintings and everything, but, you know, I always have the urge to try other things and sometimes they turn out, sometimes they don't. But this type of painting right here, it just makes these super... Um, I, I guess motion filled paintings is the best way I could put it. Like there's just a ton of movement in them and they're very like, they're not flat. Right. I, I don't know what it is. Like I've tried to make really simple abstract paintings where it's just like a couple of colors or it's, it's super, you know, mellow or, you know, like those abstract landscapes where it's like three colors, right. You've got like a top color and a bottom color and like a, a middle color in the middle to kind of, signify like the land or water or whatever it is um or like those super simple abstracts where it's just like one color and then maybe like one other color over it or 
you know, as kind of a design or something like that. Like, I just, I can't do it. I, I've tried and I don't know what my aversion is to it, <laughs> but I, I just, I don't know if it's like insecurity or if it's just kind of the way that I'm wired, but I essentially like, I'm not comfortable with a painting unless it has like a decent amount of pain on it. So I don't know, man. I don't know what it is, but uh, that's just kind of me. And that's basically how I think and operate. So to make these types of paintings, it's really, um, it's really fun because it's taking up the whole painting and there's a lot of movement. So I guess what I like about it is that it, it breaks the colors up, right? So it, it kind of spreads that color out. So it's not like just big pockets of one color. Uh, or sorry, it's not like just one one corner of one color, I should say, because there is big pockets of color. Um, but it, it really just kind of like breaks it up so that there's just a lot of different um, colors in there. And so here it is. You can see that I'm actually like pulling the tape off so that you can kind of see what it looks like with clean edges. But I think, like I talked about in my last video, I think I'm going to wait until the painting dries completely before I start pulling the tape off because it's start, it, the paintings have been warping. They've been um, kind of curling under, the, I think, the weight and the wet, like the dampness of the paint. And so it's been kind of causing the paint to pool because there's so much paint on there, right? It's starting to pool and... Uh, and it's actually pulling the paint together and, and, and it's kind of like losing those colors because it's starting to pull together. So if you've ever seen paint pull together, it, what it does is it stretches and it pulls all those colors into itself. So you lose the definition of the painting because of it. And, you know, sometimes that's okay depending on the look you're going for, but, but not on this type of thing where, you know, this is the painting that's very flat, very... Um, you know, dynamic like this. And so this painting actually started doing that too. And like I talked about in my last video, I'll probably end up picking up like a torch or something like that little butane torch to kind of run over the top so that I can start drying it in place so it doesn't move as much. But, um, you know, I'll probably have to invest in one of those. We'll see. I'll try it both ways. I'll try it with the tape still on there and see if it still warps. And if it does, then I, I probably won't have a choice but to either paint when it's hot or with the torch. But that's pretty much it, guys. I was really impressed with this painting. Um, you know, I will put it up for sale eventually. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, rate, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another one. Take care.